If you feel like you need to buy more organization solutions to accommodate the stuff in your house, if you're constantly losing things, if you have drawers and cabinets in your home that don't close, you might be a candidate for decluttering. Today, I'm gonna to take you through my home and show you what I've done over the last three years. We have tons of gift bags, some like bows, shoes, decorations that I'm not going to use or things that I'm just storing for the time being. There's way too much. Our closet is not big. It's really pretty small. So I feel like to have that much stuff in here, 100% does not make sense. This is where I started figuring out that your home is a boundary. The boundaries are set each wall, each space, each room, drawer is an actual physical boundary for you and it's your limit. So at the very beginning of my journey, I decluttered my closet. It's one of my first projects and it's where I figured out <laughs> that your home has boundaries. You actually need to give yourself limits. So when you start to look at your home in this way, you're able to respect those limits and make such better use of your space. So this is what my closet looked like after I decluttered all of that stuff and my closet just started functioning so much better. Now, one of my first projects was my closet. Another one was my pantry which you will see here in a minute. It is pretty unbelievable how much stuff I had managed to shove in there. Um, but you don't have to do these, you know, earth shattering projects. You can do things as simple as declutter a drawer. Everything that you declutter from your home makes an impact, especially as you do it over time. Dana K. White um, really talks about this. She's from A Slob Comes Clean here on YouTube. I will link her down below. She also has several books on Amazon that I highly, highly recommend. But remember, progress is progress no matter how small the project is. Here's another time that I just got into my basement one afternoon and I said, I'm just gonna clear it out and this is how much I was able to get done in about 20 minutes. So many items I wasn't using. And a lot of this I thought, oh, I'll use it later. Um, well, later never came. And I realized it's, this is stuff that other people could be using. I can donate this and someone else can use it because I'm clearly not. And thinking of it that way is also really helpful. There are obviously a few different ways you can go about decluttering your space, but the onion method is my favorite. The minimal mom is another YouTuber that I will link for you. She is another person I really look up to. She talks about the onion method and how when you go through your house and just kind of peel it away layer by layer, it really is an effective way to get work done. This allows you to slowly build decluttering muscles over time. The cool thing about decluttering is you are instantly able to see progress. You are able to start living with more freedom and the more layers deep you get into the decluttering process, the more excited you are to get rid of your stuff. So if you're in the process of decluttering your home or re-decluttering your home, which you have to do all the time to maintain a clutter-free space, just start somewhere. Start peeling it away. It doesn't matter if it's a big project or a small project, your garage space, just start making progress. You know, before I started doing a lot of decluttering in my space, I felt kind of isolated. Like, how come all my friends' houses don't look like mine? How come I feel like I'm the only one that can't keep on top of my stuff? What is wrong with me? What's my problem? And the truth is that most American homes have over 300,000 items inside. So once you realize that and know that you're not alone, it's a little bit more encouraging. You are not the only one struggling and there are solutions to every single clutter problem you have. There are ways to work with your space. In fact, let me know what area of your home you are either decluttering or re-decluttering right now. What kind of space are you working with? I would love to help. So here's my pantry. Ooh, it's really, really not organized. This was in our townhome. And again, one of my first projects. And I just attacked it and started realizing that, wow, there's another way to live. I don't have to live with piles of stuff. And if I can do this to every area of my home, I will transform my life. And it took me almost a year to do it. And then I have to re-declutter 
every day. <laughs> I feel like being a clutter gatekeeper is one of my missions, like to stay on top of the clutter and I don't do a perfect job, but I've realized that, you know, there is no way to live completely clutter free unless you're willing to adjust some of your habits and become a, gl a clutter <laughs> gatekeeper. Man, that is a tongue twister. A clutter gatekeeper where you are always on the lookout for clutter and you are willing to, you know, make piles for the donation center and try and get your family on board. It is such a worthwhile goal. Some areas of the home that I recommend decluttering every single week would be areas in your kitchen, like your fridge and the pantry. Also your car and your purse. I love keeping the nightstand decluttered as well. Any clutter hotspots in your home, any spot that really just attracts clutter. For me, this is like the junk drawer slash utility drawer and we have a couple flat surfaces that really attract clutter as well and then as far as monthly decluttering goals i like to go through clothing especially at the change of a season make sure everybody's got shoes that fit properly i like to go through my dishes things that get cracked and broken or things we haven't been using obviously get recycled or donated then every six months, I recommend going through things like the linens, maybe your documents, jewelry, your laundry room, garage, checking out your kitchen appliances, your swimwear, and then going through your makeup and electronics. And this is what I call my um, master list. It's the areas of my home that need to be decluttered. And I love having a seasonal schedule. I think it's really helpful and it just keeps me accountable to my stuff and it keeps me on top of my space and I feel like I'm able to run my life um, and not have my life run me, at least for the most part. I wanna show you a couple more of my home's uh, worst moments just to give you some encouragement and remind you that you are not alone. I am here in the trenches with you and these transformations are completely possible. They are work, they're work for all of us, but you can start to really enjoy your home your space when you get rid of clutter. And remember, it doesn't have to be all at once. It doesn't have to be a big project. Chip away it slowly, one little drawer at a time if that's what it takes. And over time, you will have completely transformed your space. Don't forget to let me know what it is you're struggling with right now. What are the hurdles you're trying to get past? And how can I help? I am so excited we are on this journey together.